As many of the nation's CEOs distanced themselves from Donald Trump last week with carefully worded statements condemning racism and violence, CEO Ravine Gandhi, the founder of GMM Nonstick Coatings for Cookware, wrote an unusually forthright op-ed for CNBC titled, I tried to give Trump a chance, but after Charlottesville, it's over, saying, quote, I will not defend Trump even if the Dow hits 50,000, unemployment goes to 1%, and GDP grows by 7%. Some issues transcend economics, and I will not, in good conscience, support a president who seems to hate Americans who don't look like him. The backlash was swift and full of hate and racist scorn. One email read, quote, you're angry for having been born with 50% Negro blood in your veins. Embrace your heritage. Quit mouthing off. Then there was a voicemail Gandhi received that he played for his clients and has since shared online. Here's just a sample. Yes, this is for Raven Gandhi. Uh, I read his article on CNBC uh, Internet, and he tried to give Trump a chance. But after Charlottesville, he just can't do it. Well, then get your garbage and go back to India and sell it over there. Don't tell us about Donald Trump. Don't tell us about this country. And I can assure you, you're not going to tell us what statues stand and what statues go. Go back to where the pigs live in India and go clean up your own damn country. It's a filthy mess. You're a Indian pig and so is Nikki Haley. Ravine Gandhi joins us now from Chicago, close to where he grew up. Um, why'd you play that for, uh, for folks? Well, it came in literally at a work lunch, and it came into one of my sales guys who, who took me aside and played it, and I was so stunned that my clients saw that something was up, so I, I put his phone on speaker, and then everyone was so agog that uh, I thought, you know what, I think that this uh, might be a good American moment to, to put it out there, and I can't believe the response. What has been the response? Oh, I mean, from the community, it's been unequivocally positive. And uh, obviously, I don't read the quotes at the bottom of some of the articles online from the nut jobs like that lady. But uh, I think uh, the fact of the matter is I was born in this country. I was raised in this country. I've built a business in this country. I've paid millions of dollars of taxes in this country. I'm raising my two kids in this country. I love this country. And the fact of the matter is I am just as American as anyone else. Um, I think that's not even up for debate. And you can tell I'm a little bit fired up here because just even hearing that message gets my blood kind of boiling. But it's very important for me, honestly, to communicate that I am very unequivocal about the fact that there is no way that that nut job lady is representative of all Trump voters. I have a tremendous amount of friends who are conservative Republicans, who are very good people. I just think that I... You know, uh, I, I'm just, I was a little angry about the dog whistle that I thought was, what has been out there for the last year. So well, that's kind of why I'm fired up. That, that's a question, right? I mean, the question is what, and I would agree with you in a statistical sense, uh, that, that is not broadly representative of Trump voters who would call and leave a voicemail like that. But it also seems to me that the, the backlash you got to writing that article, uh, a lot of it really did centered on your ethnicity. That was front and center in, in the response you got. Well, absolutely. Uh, Newsweek figured out that that lady uh, was the same lady who left a voicemail for the guy who wrote Trump's book, The Art of the Deal. I think his name is Tony Schwartz. Mm -hmm. and, and if you listen to that message and you listen to mine, mine is far worse because uh, she goes on Indian this and Nikki right. Haley this. And I, it just boils my blood when someone thinks that that because I look like the way I do or my last name's Gandhi, that I'm any less of an American. And one of the reasons that I'm going public with this is that, you know, I live a fantastic life. I, I'm the CEO of a company. I, my race is not an issue at all in my day-to-day -day life, but that voicemail and many other messages demonstrate that there's a lot of people in this country, these insidious scumbags, who are fringe elements, who are filled with hate. And uh, I wanted to shine a light on the fact that, that I could actually be a victim also. Do you, you, you use the word insidious scumbags. Do you think the president uh, in the way that he discussed Charlottesville, the way that he's conducted himself, the language he's chosen has essentially given tacit approval or aid and comfort to those folks. I, I was pretty darn insulted at, um, at the response. And honestly, if he would have left it at the statement on Monday, I would have said, you know what? It took 48 hours and I could tweet all I want about it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe you at your word at the statement. But what really made me go nonlinear is the press conference on Tuesday. When I saw him go off the cuff, uh, I wrote in my op-ed, Maya Angelou said, when someone tells you who they are, believe them the first time. And I felt like I saw 
who this president was at that point. Do you believe them the first time? There's a process that happens often with this president where he does things that are uh, violate various social taboos and not even political ones, just basic ones that people have about <laughs> right. not making fun of people who have uh, different abilities, etc. And then people sort of forget it. Um, I guess the question is, what are the conversations you have with other CEOs, other people in the business community about that process? Are they going to, are, are those folks going to engage in the forgetting again this time? It, it is a conversation that I have all the time with uh, peers of mine that are CEOs and, and, and many other people. And I truly hope that that doesn't happen because time after time, like you said in 2016, it was, oh, he's done, he's done, he's done. And then he wins again. But but I want to speak right now to all of the good moderates, all of the good moderates who voted for Mr. Trump because you're a Republican or because, you know, you didn't take what he said seriously. And look at what happened. Steve Bannon's out last Friday. And I really think that uh, I want to inspire people. If you feel like you made the wrong choice, speak out, because this president, when he sees that people uh, believe something, I think he'll respond to it. Hmm. And I want, it, I want him to get the Republicans and the Democrats in a room and actually be bipartisan. We can change stuff in this country if we speak out, and I'll believe that till the day I die. All right, Ravine Gandhi, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Ahead, the widespread